Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going to learn how to make your EC2 instances resilient. Before we begin, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Ajit Dinamdar. I work as a cloud architect with one of the leading cloud consulting companies in India. I have about 10 years of experience in the IT industry across multiple domains. I am 9x AWS certified professional. Apart from that, I am also recognized as an AWS ambassador and a community builder. Please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. The link is mentioned here. Let's have a look at the agenda for this video. Firstly, we will learn what is an EC2 instance. Then we will try to understand why resilience is required. Then we will see how resilience can be achieved in EC2. We will see the implementation of resilience in EC2 with a hands-on demo. Then we will learn how we can validate and track resilience using an AWS service. And finally, we will see some best practices working with Amazon EC2. So what's exactly is an EC2 instance? EC2 is a web service which provides resizable computing capacity on demand, meaning you can scale your EC2 instances vertically and horizontally as and when required. EC2 service provides reliable scalable infrastructure and it can scale within minutes with SLA commitment of 99.99% of availability. It provides a simple web interface to create and configure virtual servers quickly and easily. What makes EC2 instance more special is its integration with multiple AWS services. We have learned what is an EC2 instance. Now let's understand why do we need resilience in EC2 at the first place. As we all know, every component of any infrastructure is prone to failure. So in case of a failure, we should configure our EC2 instances in such a way that they are able to recover in time to avoid application downtime. Building resilient infrastructure will help us to avoid data loss permanently. Building a resilient infrastructure will minimize your RTO and RPO. Recovery time objective or RTO is the duration of time within which a business process must be restored after a disaster. Recovery point objective or RPO refers to your company's loss tolerance that is, the amount of data that can be lost after significant harm to the business occurs. These were some of the important reasons why resilience is required. Now let's see how we can achieve the same in EC2. Let's look at this sample single AZ architecture. We have an ALB, a NAT gateway, EC2 instance with auto scaling configured, a RDS instance and a S3 bucket. Even though it has a load balancer and auto scaling enabled, in case of a AZ level failure, our application will incur a significant downtime. You can improve resilience by spreading your applications across multiple AZs. If your compliance bodies permits, you can keep copies of your AMIs across multiple regions. Similarly, you can keep EBS snapshots across multiple regions. You can automate the backup of AMI and snapshots using Amazon Data Lifecycle Manager. You can make your application highly available using Amazon EC2 auto-scaling. You can also distribute your incoming traffic among multiple instances using an elastic load balancer. So let's try to map the points mentioned earlier in the previous slide with this architecture diagram. We have spread our EC2 instances across multiple availability zones configured with an auto-scaling group. ELB has been configured across all the AZs to distribute traffic among the EC2 instances. Apart from that, NAT gateway has been configured across two AZs and for RDS, a standby has been provisioned using multi-AZ option. We have seen everything in theory. Now let's see the same in action. Before we start deploying stuff onto EC2 instance, let's create the networking base for the same. For that, let's go to VPC. Click on launch VPC wizard. Under the VPC settings, you will find two options, VPC only and VPC and subnets etc. Let's select the second one. There is an auto generated tag project. Let's keep it as it is. Let's keep the IPv6 CIDR block to IPv6. 
Select availability zones as 3 for high availability. Select the number of public subnets as 3. Select the number of private subnets as 6 for app and db layer segregation in the future. Select the NAT gateways as 1 per AZ for max redundancy. Select none for VPC endpoints. Enable the DNS host names and choose create VPC. The creation of all the networking components will take some time. Once done, let's quickly validate whether it is created as expected. We can see that the public and private subnets have been created. A single route table for public and six separate route tables have been created for private subnets. In the private route table, you will see a route out towards the NAT gateway for destination 0.0.0.0 and for public subnet, you will see a route for internet gateway. Let's quickly check internet gateway and NAT gateway and move towards the next step. Now let's try to build a resilient architecture according to what we have learnt earlier. Let's create an ALB as a first step. Choose create load balancer. Choose application load balancer. Let's give the load balancer a name. I am giving EC2 resilience demo ALB as the name. Keep the scheme as internet facing. Select the VPC which we have created in the previous step. Under the mappings, choose all three availability zones. Under the each availability zone, choose the public subnet. Choose the public subnet as we want to expose the load balancer to the internet. Under security groups, remove the default one and create a new one. Give a proper name and description. Select the custom VPC which we have created earlier. Under the inbound rules, allow port 80 from the open internet that is 0.0.0.0/0. Provide a tag name and choose create security group. Once done, click refresh button and select the created security group. Under listeners and routing, let's create a target group. Keep the target type as instance. Give a target group name. Keep the port as 80. Keep the protocol version and health checks as is. Add a name tag and click next. Then create the target group. The targets will be automatically added in the later stage. Refresh and select the target group we just created. Add a tag of your choice. And then choose create load balancer. Let's quickly validate whether our load balancer is created as expected. Once done, let's move towards the next step that is creation of launch configuration. Click on launch configurations. Create launch configuration. Give a name of your choice. Choose the AMI Amazon Linux 2. Choose the instance type as T2 small. Click on choose. 
Keep the additional configuration as it is. Under the advanced details, I am adding an user data to install PHP Apache. I have already copied the installation steps. Let me quickly validate all the information. Keep the storage as default. Under the security group, let's select a security group which I have already created. Let me quickly show you the entries for that security group. In the inbound rule, I have added a security group of the load balancer as a source on port 80. Let's go back to the previous screen. Under the key pair section, choose an existing key pair. I have already created a key pair. Let's select that. Once done, let's click on create launch configuration. Now that our launch configuration has been created, let's create the auto scaling group. Select the launch configuration, click on actions and click create auto scaling group. Give auto scaling group a name of your choice. and click on next. Under the network section, choose the VPC which we have created earlier. And under the subnets, select private 1, private 2 and private 3 subnets. Once done, click next. Under the load balancing section, select attach to an existing load balancer and select the target group which we created earlier in the ALB step. Keep all other settings as is and click next. For this demo, I am keeping the desired capacity as 2, minimum capacity as 1 and maximum capacity as 4. Under the scaling policies, select target tracking scaling policy. Here the scaling will happen if the average CPU utilization is greater than 50. Keep all other settings as default and click on next. For this demo purpose, I am not keeping any notifications. So we can skip this step and click on next. Add a tag of your choice. and click on next. Let's quickly verify all the settings and click create auto scaling group. The auto scaling group has been created and the status is updating the capacity. Let's go to the auto scaling group. Click on the instance management tab. You can see that two instances have been registered under the auto scaling group and the status is healthy and the life cycle is pending. Let's go to instances and check whether we can see the instances there as well. I made a typo in the tag name. That's why we cannot see the name in the name tag. Let's do a quick refresh and check whether the instances are in running state. Let's quickly validate whether the auto scaling group has added our targets in the target group for the load balancer. We can see here that the target registration is in process. The health status for the targets is unhealthy. That is because I have not changed the default configuration of the health checks according to my requirement. Let me check the name of the file that I have created in the user data under the launch configurations.
we can see here that it is php info.php even though the health checks are failing our application must be running as expected let's go to the load balancer under the description let's grab the dns name go to the browser and paste the dns name and add php info.php at the end we can see here that the page is opening up Let's do a refresh and check whether the IP address is changing. Here we can see that the load is getting distributed among both the servers. Now let's work on getting the health status healthy. Go to your target groups. Go to health checks. Click the edit button and under the health check path add php info.php. Once done, save the changes. Just wait for a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, you can do a refresh. After checking for some time, now we can see that the health status is healthy for one of the instance. And now we can see that the health status is healthy for both the instances. And under the path, we can see php info.php. This way, you can create a resilient architecture using EC2 instances and auto scaling groups. Now, let's move to the next part that is creating snapshots and AMIs using Lifecycle Manager. Go to the EC2 console, click on instances. I have already created an EC2 instance EC2 resilience demo. We have to take AMI backups and snapshots of this particular instance. On the left hand side, let's go to lifecycle manager. Here we have three options EBS snapshot policy, EBS back AMI policy and cross account copy event policy. Let's select EBS snapshot policy. Under the target resource types, select instance, add a tag name and name of the EC2 instance, add a policy description of your choice, we can keep the am role as default, let's quickly check what are the default role permissions. Add a tag to the policy of your choice. Keep the policy status as enabled. Keep the parameters as default. We do not want to exclude the root volume. And click on next. Here we can add a schedule of our choice. I am choosing the custom cron expression. I want the snapshot to be run every hour. Accordingly, I am setting the cron expression. Let's keep the retention count as 10. Scroll down. Let's copy tags from the source. I am enabling the fast snapshot restore for this particular demo. And I am keeping the snapshots to two most recent snapshots.
Under the availability zone, I am selecting all three availability zones for redundancy. I am enabling the cross region copy. Keeping all other options as default. If you want to share your AMIs across accounts, you can share it from here. Uh, that is from the cross account sharing option. But for this demo, I am not doing that. Once all settings are done, click on review policy. Let's quickly review the policy and click create policy. Now we can see that the policy has been created successfully. Now let's create a EBS backed AMI policy. Select EBS backed AMI policy. Click next. Enter the target resources tags. Add a policy description. Keep the IAM role as default. Let's quickly verify the default permissions. Add a tag of your choice. Keep the policy status as enabled. I am keeping the reboot instance at policy run as no for now. I have added the tags, however, I forgot to click the add button. Now let's click on next. Again, here for the AMI backup as well, I want to add a custom schedule. I want to have a AMI backup every hour for my EC2 instance. Accordingly, I'll put a cron expression. I'll keep the retention count as 10. I'll select the copy tags from source. I'll add some additional tags of my choice. I'm keeping the MI deprecation options as is for now. I am enabling the cross region copy option and keeping all other options as default for now. Once done, click on review policy. Quickly validate everything and click create policy. Now here we can see that both the policies have been created successfully. We have seen some of the options to make your EC2 instances resilient. AWS service called AWS Resilience Hub, which provides a central place to define, validate and track the resilience of your applications on AWS. It will gather data from multiple AWS services and provide findings in the console. Accordingly, we can investigate the findings and take remediating actions. These are some of the best practices we must follow while working with EC2 instances in general. Use IAM users and IAM roles to manage access. If you want to extend access to any application hosted on EC2, always use IAM roles. Always implement least permissive rules for your security groups. Avoid allowing port from open to world sources. Use instance metadata and your custom resource tags to track AWS resources. 
Deploy critical components of your workload across multiple availability zones and replicate data accordingly. Do not hardcode IP addresses in your application to handle dynamic IP allocation. Backup your AMIs and EBS volumes regularly to avoid data loss. Hope you now have a fair idea on EC2 resilience. Thanks for watching. Please watch out for this space for more such informative content.